Your comment made me realize something that I hadn't noticed before in this way. So before I go into that, um, Robert and Robert's mother, there's actually been quite a few questions about them. And for anybody who's not been with me before, my name is Marnie Grunman. I'm a survivor of a mother who is a sociopath and a narcissist. Robert and Robert's mother, that's one of the houses that I used to run to when I was running away from my mother, when I was running away from home. And also Robert was my like little boyfriend. I was 11, I think he was a grade ahead of me. And his mom happened to be a child psychologist. I have really fond memories of her and I'm very grateful for the time and the interactions that I had with Robert's mother because she really gave me a feeling that there was something worthwhile about me while my mother was letting me know that I was damaged goods, literally using words like that to me and letting me know that um, I deserved to be abused and that everybody knew that I was crazy and sick in the head and a tramp and all of these different things that my mother would put on to me that at the age of 11 were very, even before that, very solidified in my knowledge of who I was. So having Robert's mother not just be a wonderful and warm human being, but also be a child psychologist, there's no doubt in my mind that she saw a child who was in distress. And because the abuse was emotional, and given the, I mean, we're talking the 70s, it would have been very difficult for her to be able to intervene in a meaningful way, meaning like social services or police or anything like that. So it seems to me what she chose to do was fill my love cup, which was very, very empty. Robert was my, as I said, like my little boyfriend when I was 11 and um, my mother hated him, although she didn't know him and hated his mother, but never actually interacted with her other than maybe once on the phone to my knowledge. She also didn't like any of my other friends. Um, my best friend, her name was Cindy. Uh, I used to run to her house, just like I used to run to Robert's house when I was running away for survival from my mother. And my mother didn't end the relationship with Cindy. I'm not sure why that was, but she did end the relationship with Robert and Robert's mother. And that was because she got wind that Robert's mother was a child psychologist. And what I'm noticing now in this postcard was I couldn't figure out what my mother meant by don't get another Robert. And I've thought about it a few times over the years. And I was like, like, what did he do to her? And it wasn't what he did to her. It's what his mother represented. Another perspective, a normalcy, a, 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 a contrast that would allow me to know that I wasn't the problem and that it was my mother. She was a threat to my mother's ability to control me emotionally and continue to abuse me. And that's why she put in the postcard, don't get another Robert, meaning don't get another person who's going to be there for you. And as my mother took away Robert and Robert's mother um, and limited the way that I even interacted with Cindy, which was the other house that I used to run to, she put me in the position of having nowhere to run. And the result of that was when I was 12 years old and I ran away from her, I ended up getting in a car with someone who held me captive all night and essayed me. And at the age of 12 years old, that's how I lost my virginity. I had already been molested many times before that by different people, but this was different because nothing like this had happened to me before. And when I got dropped off by the individual, the piece of garbage who did that to me, um, he did so a little bit away from my house. And even though I can only imagine the state of me walking into my house in the morning and I know that I was dirty and, and you know, hair matted and the whole nine yards, nobody, including my aunt who was right there, asked me where I had been, how I was, if I was okay, or anything like that. My mother just berated me and kept saying, who the F do you think you are? And my aunt kind of pulled me to the side a little. I got sent to my room and I didn't come out and I just passed out. 
um, the next result of not having anywhere to run to was me running away at the age of 13 and ending up living on the streets. I lived on the streets for a year and a half and then I got a job as a cocktail waitress in Miami Beach at the age of 14 and a half. Yep, that happened. And all sorts of, I got traffic for labor, all these different things happened to me. And social services uh, sent me back to my mother without any asking of any questions, why I ran nothing when I was uh, 17 and a half years old. And now I had a little baby girl who was just a, a couple of days old when that decision would, was made and 10 days old when I actually traveled. If I had had those people to run to, even if they never found out about the actual abuse that was going on in my house, and I wouldn't have told, because to tell on my mother was to tell on me, because I believed that I was bad and I deserved it. And so if I said, well, you know, my mother is doing these things or saying these things, then I would be in trouble. You know, that's what happens to kids. That, that's what we, th we think, that's what I thought. And I know that's what children genuinely think. And that's why it's difficult for them to tell. And the other part is so much of it was normalized that I wouldn't have known exactly what to tell on. But if at least I had had those places to continue to run to a little bit, um, to have a soft place to fall, I wouldn't have lost my entire rest of my childhood to the streets. I mean, it was already a trauma hood because of my mother, but I didn't get to go to high school, not one day, not one second, not one minute, did I get to go to high school. I didn't get to graduate high school with my friends. I didn't get to do dances and have those developmental milestones and things like that because I was fighting for my survival living on the streets. And if I had had some place that was an outlet that gave me a little bit of love every time I had a touch with it, like with, with um, I was gonna say her name, I don't wanna do that, with, with Robert's mom. I just don't wanna put the names together. Who knows, you know? She doesn't have like an everyday name, whatever. Anyway, um, well, for these days and ages. Anyway, if, if I had been able to continue having those touches, she was feeding me something that was driving me to survive. This is what narcissistic abusers do. My mother is a sociopath and a narcissist, and they will do everything they can to retain ultimate control. And they don't make connections between that and long-term consequences. Because if they did, they would realize that eventually we grow up and we fight back and we fight back and we leave or whatever that looks like but we don't stay under their thumb. They can't imagine a world where that happens, but they definitely can imagine their ability to control becoming more difficult. So they will do anything they can to make sure that anytime you're in a relationship that looks like it could be in any way supportive of you and in, in, in giving contrast to what they're doing, they're going to do everything they can to demolish that relationship. So there you go. Don't get another Robert. Oh, and for some other questions. Uh, yes, Robert was a really nice guy. He was a kid. I was a kid. They were really, really nice. No, I've never found Robert or his mother. I've looked on Facebook and things like that. And um, maybe one day I will, at least to be able to thank his mom. That would be really meaningful to me. So thanks for the questions and thanks for the comment because you gave me another light bulb moment which fortunately does happen a lot as I'm sharing my story and I'm grateful for it as I share my experiences. You know, it, it, it helps me to heal too. And that's why I always say we're a community. Like there, I, I don't do the whole followers thing. We are here together. And when you make comments, um, even if I don't have a chance to respond, know that I'm reading them and your comments impact me in a really positive way because it, it allows me to expand on certain things like this and get closure around a comment or around an experience or another light bulb moment. That's why talking about what we've been through is so important to the healing process. Thanks for being here and um, thanks for the comment.